Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match. This will be on Act Natural between God and Cron Aberrant. Between God and Cron Aberrant. This is a matchup we saw last, two weeks ago. I apologize I wasn't here last week. I was a bit, bit busy, but I'm here now. Anyway, two weeks ago we went over a match between Cron Aberrant and God on this very same map. And it was a rather anticlimactic game. I'm not really going to go too much into it except to say that basically God did not play the way God plays. He... He just... I don't know what he was... what was wrong. But he had... He made a bunch of mistakes. So it was a, a bit of an unfortunate anticlimactic game and I don't really want to go into it too much. Suffice to say, it was something that... I... Basically, after casting it, God said, No, you gotta cast this game instead. This is the game. This is the cool game. This is the one that actually makes my play look good. And I was thinking, well, okay, I mean, your play always looks good. But, or usually it looks good anyway. But apparently this was the game. So, anyway, this is Assassin Mode as well. We've seen that before. So, God very quickly moving out all of his infantry, getting Cronaberrant's Acron to those is not really important. We see this is echoing. It was going to be echoed out, I'm sure. Cronaberrant is going over and will be spotted by Nocturne. So, God knows what Cronaberrant's playing, Cronaberrant knows what God is playing, so both players are aware of each other. And this was played actually on version 1.4, not 1.4.0.1. There were some balance changes in the latter, particularly with Reef Healing, where Reef Healing was nerfed quite a bit. The energy cost was increased and the time was decreased, I believe. I think the speed of the rate of healing, I should say, was decreased if I recall correctly. And other than that, there weren't a lot of super notable changes. But there was. Yeah, sorry about the frame rate drop. I'm trying to close this stuff in the background to help it out. Anyway, there were some issues with brief healing. It was a little bit too powerful. And as a result, got nerfed, but it's not nerfed in this particular game. So if we see if we see Cronaberrant using reefs, they will be the reefs that take five energy to heal, and pretty much are gonna heal up everything. But other than that, not really much change. So it looks like God's actually race. He's oh, he's species swapping to Grekum. Apparently didn't really like the way that CISO went, or just use CISO to scout. A strategy I've actually seen a couple times early, a couple times prior, although I've never seen anyone established do it. I've seen some new players do it, and I support that idea. Like, species switching is a part of the game, it's something you can do, and CISO has a much easier time scouting than Grekum does. I know it sounds kind of weird, oh yeah, if you want to scout as Grekum, play CISO. But the way that it's laid out right now, I mean, Assassin Mode does help because you get a free unit that's essentially only useful for scouting. That's really about it. That's all it actually does, other than not die. And really, not dying is an omission, not an action. You're... it... Yes, yeah, survival is kind of the default here. I know it sounds weird, but it is. People, units just exist until they're killed. So, the only thing this thing does is see what's going on, and... For Grekum, that helps a lot, but for CISO and Vekir, it's not that big of a difference. I mean, it can be used, obviously, and it is, but... It's convenience for them while it's pretty much necessary for Grekum, or close to. So yeah, play CISO if you want to scout as Grekum. That's still being worked on. Or at least, play CISO and then species swap to Grekum once you have figured out what your opponent is up to. So at this point, God just has his art, his Akron back. Both players have fully scattered. They are both set on Grekum. This species selection is in the unplayable past. God has... Well, see, this is Cron Aberrant's Akron, by the way. God's Akron's in the middle of the map, just hanging out. And Cron Aberrant has a... He had an Octopod. Let's see, at this point in time, this is the 141 mark. And Cron Aberrant, at the 312 mark, actually is assaulting with his Octopod. When God is looking, the Octopod is... Going around, using the nice, using the raised sections of the map in order to go around without going through the center and alerting God where his scouting Akron is. Though God is fully aware of this now, or yes, he is, because you're looking at his perspective right now. He is fully aware of the attack going on. 
Moving his Akron back, I'm not sure why. It was actually pretty safe where it was. I mean, Cronenberg wasn't going through the center, wasn't going to find it, but he's decided to go back to base anyway. I guess maybe to bait the the Octopod. A little bit of an awkward move given that Akron survival is paramount. But I suppose it's it is a gambit. I mean, it does buy him time to build up stuff in his base, which that would be the main reason I would see to do that. Get a couple Octos and then use those to attack. But otherwise, I'm really not certain what the advantage would be. Yeah, it does appear that there is going to be some fair amount of damage being dealt with this Akron. But, let's see, Octo here, another Octo, so it looks like, yes, this is being used for defense, so he did exactly that. He did, in fact, buy himself some time to get himself some defense forces. Granted, the Arcticus does that job well enough anyway, so... His Akron wasn't too much at risk, but it was still a little bit bizarre. Cron Aberrant... I mean, given Cron Aberrant doesn't have a whole lot of units with us to do this, he can't really capitalize on the... Not really a mistake, but on God having his Akron out in front. But it is still something that... It was risky. Still, God pulled it off, so... At least that worked. And it looks like Cron Aberrant... Let's see, from his point of view, he is... Well, from this point of view, he may have not be seeing the attack propagate. God sees the attack propagate, though, so we'll look from his point of view, see what's going on. And here come the Octos. One of the Octos hitting, and the other Octo will be coming around, taking the long way around, but it still will get there soon enough. And, wow, Crimer actually killing off a couple of God's RPs. I'm not sure what God is looking at here. I This is rather bizarre. Why are these o Octos? Attack! Attack! He's clearly still doing stuff, so it's not like the replay is totally borked or anything, it's just... No, okay, he is attacking. I guess it's just that he already propagated that, so there's no reason to have the orders keep going further in the future. So yeah, God gets rid of this Octopod without much issue at the 411 mark, or a bit past it, at the 340 mark, actually. So, Crown Aberrant doesn't appear to have actually dealt any real damage. All this damage here getting wiped out at the timeline, so no big deal! So, Crown Aberrant and God, about even. I think Crown Aberrant may have a slight economic advantage. He definitely has a tech advantage, getting advanced structures up right now. But, he doesn't really have much else going for him at the moment. I... Th actually, God's taking a lot of damage. God was actually slightly behind for economy, too. He's trying to rebuild. He is actually rebuilding somewhat. He does have a QP advantage on Crown Aberrant. He does actually have three RPs and QP. Actually... Let me think, 5 LC, 3, 3 QP versus 6 LC, 1 QP. Yeah, Crown Aberrant's actually slightly behind for economy. He's trading that for tech and will be very quickly getting a Spire from the looks of it. Let's see here, if that goes through, then yeah, it looks like a Spire will be forthcoming. Whereas, God continued to focus entirely on economy, really pumping, just saturating all of these crates quite well before going for economy, so really trying to get his army in at the last minute, his tech in at the last minute. And Crown Aberrant, at this point, hard to say, because he could... I mean, God doesn't have a lot in reserve except for the QP. So Crown Aberrant could push out Pharopods maybe or something, and then use that to really make a powerful move. But I'm not entirely sure how effective that would be in general, as... God is getting his Reef up, and like I said, Reefs are qu still quite powerful. And a Pharopod would still be useful for dealing with some of these. And Crown Aberrant will almost doubtless build one. He's very fond of them, so I'm expecting one to come up as soon as he gets the QP for it. But he doesn't have a lot of QP at the moment, and he's not... He has some QP RPs, so I'd say within the next minute or so he'll have enough QP to do that. Assuming he doesn't spend on anything else, but... He is getting another progenerating pair from the looks of it, and... Let's see, God on the other hand, getting advanced structures, has it, so both players will be able to get air, so God, however, further than the, he's a minute up from there, his Reef is still researching it when Crown Aberrant is focused, Crown Aberrant has, no, it's actually done, so Crown Aberrant does not actually have any timing on this. He does have a, a Sepipod coming up though, so a bit surprising, he's not going for harassment, he is going entirely for defense, and given that Crown Aberrant is slightly behind in economy, I'm rather surprised by this turn. In fact... Where is two RPs? He had RPs... Oh, he's moving QP. Yeah, he's not building up economy at all. He's merely moving his RPs to get around. Whereas God is... Wow, he is almost... He's swimming in resources. I'm... Yeah, there's Chronoporting. I was, wondering... I was about to say... It looks like he's probably going to get Chronoporting pretty soon because 
that's what you do when you're swimming in resources like that. I mean, I'm a bit surprised Carnavron is leaving him alone the way he is, not even scouting it out, like echoing out his Guardian or anything, because that's something that you can do. Remember, Grekum now has a free scout unit that they can basically just echo out whenever they want, and it's not a big deal. At least... Well, okay, it's a small deal if you lose it. But if you echo it out in time, it's not a big deal. If, as long as you echo it out before it even leaves your base, then you're good. Because that way your opponent can't just intercept it midway and then you're done no matter what. But it looks like God definitely going for the Sebi Pod. Sorry, God is defending the Sebi Pod. Carnivore getting the Sebi Pod. God's going for his Chrono Porn. He hasn't used it yet, but I'm sure we'll see it very soon. That is going to be rather annoying for Crown Amber, being that Crown Amber does not have a lot of resources right now. He does have a Farapod as well, and could harass out. I'm not sure if he's aware of what God is up to, but I'm sure from looking at what's going on, he can easily infer that Chrono Porting has been researched. Although Crown Amber, at his point of view, it has not yet been researched, it's being researched. He can hear it being researched, and he sees all his money. He still has the QP here. And looks like he's trying to go for Guardian, just trying to get it, but God, Chrono Porting back some units... It, Hard to tell which ones because I missed when he did it. He jumped away from the propagation. But he is chrono pointing back units. And looks like he's about to jump to the departure. Seppi pod and a far and an octopod, those will have no problems dealing with a Seppi pod that Chrono Aberrant sent. So this Seppi pod here likely not dealing any damage, even though it looks like he is dealing quite a bit of damage to that Acron. Since the orders are already sent, the death of the Acron would not cause a paradox with the chrono porting. Now the green, this green time of just about to reach the arrival, and it has reached the arrival, and it looks like Crown Aberrant will be looking back at some point. God probably won't be just because he's he knows it's going to happen, or is pretty sure it's going to happen, but that was, well, that was effective. It looks like there is some damage being dealt, and yes, Crown Aberrant no longer dealing damage to God. God managed to defend against this, so this Akron is not at all threatened. Getting saved in the past, but... On the other hand... Oh, you know what? No! While there was no paradox occurred by the Akron being damaged, there apparently was a paradox that came up from these guys here, though. They might be resolved. It, it did appear that there was a small paradox with the... Another Chronoport departure. It looks like an Octopod. Yes. An Octopod being Chronoported by God, so... Getting this Octopod in looks like he's going to go for an uppercut with that one. And it does appear that the original Chronoport that defended this base in the first place has been successful so this all this farpod trying to do what it can to stop that it's crown armor moved away with that and putting into progen mode i think he expected the sebi pod to be there at the time in order to progen octoligos because that's what he loves doing crown armor loves progenerating octoligos in the middle of his opponent's base there's a proxy progeneration and that would have been awesome had he not given away the fact that he has a Farapod and a Sepipod available. So Crown Aberrant moving the Farapod away, completely echoing it out so the progeneration did not occur, and God successfully chronoporting back these units, or, or not. No, the, the chronoport apparently being cancelled. So another chronoport being cancelled, I think... Is God trying to perma... I think God's trying to perma clone. That is the only thing that really explains this. He is deliberately cancelling these chronoports to make sure that the arrivals are the only ones that stay on the timeline, although... And I'll still we get a Chronoport departure here. But it looks like he's trying to make the only the arrivals get on the timeline. Stop the departures from getting on the timeline. And then from there, of course, having free units. On the other hand, Chronoport... I mean, whether or not that's deliberate, there is definitely a paradox as a result of that Chronoport... That Sebi, Sebipod, Farapod, Chrono... Sorry, Sebipod, Octopod, Chronoport here not happening to defend the Sebipod. Chronoport on the red time wave has the Sebipod. It looks like on the green time wave... Judging by the damage bars, he does not have the semi pod, but we'll see. And this green time up here, because that will propagate the lack of an arrival. Yes, here's semi pod and octopod. So the blue time wave, anything past the blue time behind the blue time wave is in God's favor. Anything past the green time wave is Cron Aberrant's. I think the paradox will resolve in Cron Aberrant's favor, just from the looks of how this green time wave is going. And yes, it will. So. Paradox is going to be working for Crown Aberrant. God is going to have a very hard time dealing with this. I think he is aware that the Paradox has failed. I mean, he sees that the Chronoports have not occurred. But I'm not sure how aware he is of that. And Crown Aberrant, on the other hand, he is getting Seppi Ligos on top of this. Though it looks like he his proxy didn't really occur, but he's still... His proxy ultimately didn't go anywhere. He didn't proxy off to Ligos because he's not sure whether or not he'd be able to take over that base. But it looks like... God, yep, green time wave ha Oh! 
no, apparently I'm actually mistaken. Apparently the green time I've... He didn't completely lose the departure. So I, the... Hmm. Looks like there is, in fact, possibility of it working in... in Karnamaran's favor. Because the lack of an arrival looks like it fell off the timeline. This is at the 840, 8.50 mark. This is... Yeah, this is Karnamaran's first Sepipod that came in and attacked. And that was around here, so right at the edge of the timeline. So no, it would appear that Cryonimer is going to take this. Like, the departures are here, so the units are vanishing, but they're not arriving. Because remember, we are about two time waves up from where this is happening. Cryonimer, only one time wave up, does see an Octopod going in there, but his Hippipod is still alive, having dealt some damage, but not enough, all of it being healed up by the Reef. And this is when he's building the, the Seppi Legos at the 1136 mark. From God's point of view, the Seppi Legos are up completely, and he also has a bunch of units corner pointing back. A bunch of new units, by the way. These are all new units corner pointing back. It's not a part of that paradox that, I, that was happening. That has been resolved. Looks like it resolved in Crown Amaran's favor, ultimately. But God trying to do what he can to push stuff back to at least mitigate the problem. And that won't work because he didn't actually push it back such that it would be on the green time. So there's still another. There's still a paradox occurring. These units still are just basically trying to avoid getting eliminated. But their existence is still not actually causally secure. Yeah, that's uh, Cryonburn is still kind of running into problems. So basically, God has put himself in a big paradox position. I think intentionally, but regardless, it seems to be spiraling out of his control. He is, however, doing what he can to push in, deal the damage he can, even if these units will not ultimately exist. If he's lucky and the Paradox does resolve for him, it will be fine. Now, if Karnabert had Chronoporting, it would be a lot easier, because his Seppi Legos would just tear those Seppi Pods apart. Actually, no, no, they wouldn't. Eight Seppi Pods would win. That's just too many Seppi Pods. But yeah, Karnabert decides instead to attack further in the future. At the 1536 mark, he is attacking, trying to get rid of all of God's RPs, though God has actually... Had no real resource harvesting for the last five minutes, from the looks of it. Or at least... Yeah, these these look like they've been out for a while now. So God's actually been pretty much broke. And Cron Aberrant still has resources in his base, having not harvested as, quick, harvested as quickly. God having a massive army of Chrono Clones, trying to do what it can, but... As we could see before, I mean, this... This is still not costly stable. Like, all these Chrono Clones are taking a lot of damage. And this... And, of course, the Originator units are taking a lot of damage as well. So some of the Seppis being destroyed, even if the entire army doesn't get paradoxed out of existence, some of the Seppis are not going to last long for Chronoport back, just because they're being killed before they manage to. And it looks like Chrono Aberrant also going for the harassment in the back, just the economy of, to no real avail. Whereas God continuing to Chronoport back... All of these units are actually Chrono Clones. Some of them have not been completely Chrono Core back. This is actually ahead of where they would be. So these are Echo Attacks. God is going for a purely Echo-based strategy, trying to completely confuse Chrono Aberrant as to what is in fact going on. But Chrono Aberrant, constantly behind the Chrono Ports, will not actually see the Echoes. Now, yeah, it'll deal some damage further in the future, but Chrono Aberrant is not Chrono Porting, so it doesn't matter to him. So for him, he's only seeing a handful of Seppi's, uh, Seppi Pods and Octopods actually dealing any damage. And right now he's at 1310 mark, so he is in fact two minutes down, or sorry, three minutes down from God. God at the 1622 mark is losing quite a lot of his base. Far pods, Seppi pods, dealing some damage. Akron running away, and some of his, his army, only the units that are there, that are actually there, not the Echoes. Some of the Echoes, however, are in play, and they are not really doing any good. Actually, God has dropped down to the 1514, 1504 mark. Chrono back to the 1423 mark with Chrono Porting. Chrono Porting back these units to get rid of the Akron, and it looks like he will successfully do it. So God actually having lost that Akron, not where he is now. He still has the Akron alive when he's looking, but he will have that Akron dead eventually. We see it now, but God doesn't care about this point in time yet, but he does now. He is, his Akron, as we can see, is dead when he is focused. He is focused in a time where his Akron doesn't exist, up in this future here. So that is going to be very painful. He has... He still has the Akron, however, near the unplayable pass, so the uppercut has not dealt enough damage, and Cryonimer's uppercut being paradoxed as well. Looks like for lack of funds, more than anything else. 
It doesn't look like that was intended, because his that was just an uppercut. That wasn't meant to be a permaclone or anything fancy like that. Just a standard uppercut, and I know it sounds weird, but when you consider that he already moved into God's base, no, that's pretty standard. It's not any Q shenanigans or anything like that. It's, it's just chronoport back when you're in position. And he did that, but for some reason has aborted it. Which is unfortunate, because it means that he will not actually get rid of God's Akron, though... No, God, his Akron is still very much alive whenever he could take control. The unplayable past, it might be dead, but otherwise, no. So there is going to be a time wave where God won't be able to act. I think the red time wave, he won't be able to act. But I'll have to double check, because... Right now, God is in a good position to get there. And it looks like, overall, yes... Oh, Krimer's Sebi Ligos are actually out! Yeah, his, his Sebi Ligos got destroyed by God's harassment in the, in the Unplayable Pass, from the looks of it. So yeah, God... I mean, Krimer here, God doesn't have any Akron, so God cannot control anything between the Red Time Wave Edge and the Blue Time Wave Edge. However, he doesn't seem to care, he is controlling every... Or, wait, no, I mean... Here, between the Red Time Wave Edge and the Blue Time Wave Edge. His Akron is dead at this point in time. But, like I said, it doesn't matter. And Krimer losing! So, Krimer surrenders! Wow, that was a lot of paradoxes. I Sorry I couldn't keep track of all of them, because that was a lot going on, but... Long story sh or weird, backward, non-linear story, linear and s shorter. God, chronoboard back, a few times, but the chronoboards failed, having not gone through, either by him cancelling them, or just them being killed, or, or the progenitors being killed. But ultimately that result in God's favor by God basically re chronoporting back units over and over, eventually undermining what Cronaburn had built to assault God, and ultimately destroying what Cronaburn had, stopping Cronaburn's one chronoport from destroying God's Akron. Phew! Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So, I'm just gonna go back and switch out the OCS so I can run the proper 1401 games, and then we will be back shortly. So, stay tuned, everyone.